Hello there, and welcome back to my series, e-learning accessibility tips and tricks. This is the mother of all accessibility videos because I'm going to show you how to analyze a web page or web resource for accessibility. Now, a lot of this isn't going to make sense if you haven't watched my other videos on accessibility, including headings, contrast, alt text, hyperlinks, all those good things. So if you've got a solid foundation already in accessibility, you are ready to move forward. If not, please check out the playlist to have an accessibility and watch some of those videos before you dive into this one. Alrighty, let's get a little technical. The best tool I found to analyze accessibility comes from web aim it's called the wave to web accessibility evaluation you can search for it online by looking up for web aim wave or go to wave.webaim.org they also have a very handy extension if you use chrome so if you're on any website you can just click that little extension and it'll analyze that website for you this is what you'll get when you use wave it'll pop up a little panel next to your web page that has all of the information you need to know about accessibility, both good and bad. As I mentioned in a past video I did on the Word Accessibility Checker for Microsoft Word, the Accessibility Checker is only as good as the human using it. It's going to give you a lot of important information technically, but it's going to miss some things you can only catch with a human eye and, a, and a, an attention to detail. So always be sure to have a good foundation accessibility and be looking at the big picture for all the things that need to be made accessible so that when you use an accessibility checker and you finish up fixing everything that needs to be fixed, you can you know rest assured that your, your item is going to be really accessible. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some real world examples. So I've got a few things already queued up. This is the University of Phoenix website. If, if somehow you're, you're not familiar, this is a for-profit university. Um, and generally, for-profit organizations are not going to be required to make their resources 508 compliant, whereas government-funded uh, institutions like um, public universities are required to make their uh, stuff 508 compliant. But still, I mean, University of Phoenix, I don't expect them to be pretty accessible because it is such a big university and, you know, they're entirely online. Uh, but let's take a look here at what WebAIM has to say. So if you want to find WebAIM, again, you can just do a quick search or wave WebAIM. I search for it all the time. I do have the extension here as well. I didn't really want to work on the University of Phoenix webpage for some reason. Uh, but it's a first tool here. All you got to do is grab the URL and paste it in here. Go ahead and pull that open. I shared it open over here as well. Um, now you'll see a whole bunch of stuff has appeared on top of the, the web page. And I've got this panel to the left now, which is the actual wave report. It defaults to the summary tab. You can see there's several other tabs here as well. Um, and the summary shows me there's 16 errors. There's also some features area. I'm not going to get into that. That's like a coding thing that I'm not super familiar with. Um, but it gives you a lot of information at a glance on what to expect from the details of this report. So if we hop over to details, it's going to show us the errors. So there's things like uh, images that are used as hyperlinks are missing alternative text. If you click on these, oh, it'll bring you to them, but I guess they're already on screen. So it's a little bit, a little bit hard to see here. Um, if you click on something, it doesn't take you to it. You can try turning off styles and see if it'll take you. Yep, there it goes. You see it flashing on screen there. If you click on this, it'll flash on screen. Uh, styles is basically the CSS, all the stuff that makes a website pretty. You can turn that off so everything becomes very linear and it takes away the images and things so you can just see um, what you're looking for. So you can see here those images don't have alternative text. Um, there's empty links here which can be a little bit tricky. That means that there's not like text associated with the link so that's just like a formatting issue. Turn the styles back on here. We can take a look at maybe the contrast issues. Let's see if we can go to very low contrast. Um, so it thinks this font is a very is not enough contrast. It's kind of overall pretty hard to look at here. So have styles one more time here. University life. Okay, you can see it's kind of a, a faded color there. What else? 
ah, here, this is very low contrast. And if you are a sighted user with um, good sight, you can see this is pretty low contrast. I have a whole video on contrast you can check out if you want to see the minimum on how to choose colors or sufficient contrast. But just browsing through, you can see these are pretty low um, contrast. We have things like redundant alternative text. So it means the images were given uh, alternative text, but more than one image has the same alternative text. That's redundant and that's confusing for someone that's using a screen reader. Uh, in my video on um, hyperlinks, I advise that you don't link to the same thing more than once in a single web page because it's confusing and a time waster for pe people using screen readers. If they're using a screen reader, they're going to be going through and browsing the links. And if more than one thing links to the same place, you're just wasting someone's time. Um, what else? All right, so that's, that's kind of a lot of the bad stuff. Uh, there are good things here. The features are generally things that are working. And again, it takes a human attention to detail to see if this is correct or not. Um, and some of these things are actually, you know, issues. So this image does have alt text for, for example, the University of Phoenix logo. It's alt text is company logo. That's fine. Uh, there are a bunch of images that don't have any alternative text. It might be because they're decorative. If they're just decorative, that's fine. You can leave the alt text empty for images that are just decorative. If there's um, something else on screen that, that um, works as far as navigation for those things. Um, linked image with alternative text, that's fine. That means these images are being used as hyperlinks, but they have alternative text. This one has good alternative text. The alternative text is closed search menu. So if someone's using a screen reader and they're wondering what this link does, it's going to be pretty clear. It's going to close the search menu. Um, there's a few other things here as well. Skip links is a um, more of a coding feature as an e-learning developer or instructional designer. That's not something you necessarily have to worry a whole lot about. But if you're using a um, professional well-designed content management system. It's going to include things like skip links and that allows uh, screen reader users to skip all the menus at the top of the page and just go straight to the content. All right, more things, structural elements. I'm all about structural elements. So you can see there are a lot of headings used here. And it starts at H1, goes to H2, down to H3. That's good. So far, it looks like there's some attention to detail in the accessibility of this page. And they're doing an okay job so far. Area, I'm not gonna touch. This is more coding stuff. That's just not really something that we have to worry about as like a front end developer. Now, if you pop over to structure, you can take another look at the headings and see how they're working out. So you can also see this is broken down into sections as well, because that's the back end coding of this web page is broken down into sections. Um, here's where you can start to get an idea using your attention to detail if the headings are appropriately structured or not. So an accessibility checker can only tell you if there are headings and you know what the structure is, not if that structure makes sense. So browsing through this, I can see we're in H2, which is fine. Then we go down to the region, which goes to H3 and Apparently every single one's called University Life. <laughs> and that's that's an issue. If you have three headings and they're all University Life, that doesn't make sense to someone using a screen reader. And I don't know if H3 uh, used here makes sense either. I wonder if there should be like H2 for region, then maybe H3 for these things. Uh, that's something I would, I would have to carefully consider. Um, this makes sense. Here's a heading H2. Underneath the questions other students are asking, you got a whole bunch of H3, that's fine. And the navigation down here goes back to H3. Um, I don't think it makes sense that the links down here are all H3. I think that navigation should probably be like an H2. And then this would make sense that these are H3. So you have to think about kind of like how these things are structured because someone using a screen reader is going to be um, browsing through all these things, through all the H2s, and then they can choose which second heading or section that they actually want to browse and then dive deeper into that. So consider how you're using that person's time. Um, finally, there's the contrast uh, checker tab here. It gives some information on uh, how well they're doing as far as contrast. Um, if you wanted to see how specific things in this page are doing, you can examine them here and it's very helpful they do have this contrast checker here for you so it tells you exactly how it is passing or failing. In this case, it's all um, how these things are failing. 
The minimum contrast required for Section 508 compliance is 4.5 to 1, and these are only 3.75 to 1. So you can see that's why they're failing. And if you're the developer here, you could change these around to try to pick a color that would work so you can get an idea of um, how, how you should change it for your own page. This is a great self-check tool so you can check your own web documents to see how they are doing. Um, I did skip the, the reference um, icon here. This is just, or I'm sorry, the reference tab here. You can check the, um, click on that link they give you to see what each icon means. And um, that'll give you some more information on that. It does take a little bit of practice to be able to parse what's going on here in the web accessibility evaluation tool. This is a very complex site, so it's going to be harder to look at versus a much simpler site. But I wanted to give you an idea of what a lot of the features look like when you're looking at this report with a complex site, so it you can kind of get a little, little bit of everything. Now let's take a look at one more site. This is the California State University Fullerton site. This is where I happen to be an instructor for a graduate program. Cal State Fullerton has been really great in the last few years about making a really big push towards offering accessibility training and requiring accessibility features in all of our web resources. So you can take a look at the website looks clean, it looks well laid out, it looks a little bit less complex than the University of Phoenix site as far, far as um, fewer subsections, things are kind of laid out together. I went ahead and pulled it up in the WAVE tool and you can see this is the University of Phoenix report. Look at all those big numbers. The Cal State Fullerton report has much smaller numbers and I really like seeing this one. Zero errors, how beautiful is that? Again, alerts are things to look at. There may or may not be problems. It doesn't mean these are necessarily problems. It means you just need to look at them. And features, kind of a, a similar thing there. You'll have to see if they are problems or if they are working out okay. So if we go through here, the details, you can check out the contrast. Now, as a sighted user, the contrast here looks fine, but I wonder if we take a look at a different way we can see what's going on. Maybe we can go to contrast here and see what's happening. Oh, it seems to think, oh, okay. So this is actually referring to these tiny little arrow um, images right here. It's kind of hard to see or impossible to see. Oh, okay, if you're looking at um, the full, fully styled page here, I didn't even notice these arrows on the first go around. So these are actually insufficient contrast. This is an orange accent color that the web um, sites use as part of the branding. And these arrows are insufficient. Now, I don't think this actually matters that these are insufficient because they're really just decorative. So that's not something that I would worry about. What else? Um, possible headings. Oh yeah, there's an H question mark. <laughs> there's something funky in the code that's going on, so you'd have to take a look at that. Oh, I like the suspicious link text. Ooh, tell me more about that. Let's turn off the styles and see if we can look a little bit closer at that. More, okay. That's suspicious. So there's there's a, do uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Like a database in the back end of this where they're flagging suspicious words. More. Is a suspicious word. What does that mean? If you're using a screen reader, would you want to click on something that says more? Then instead, this should be worded like something like more social media, for example, since I see by um, cited proximity here that that's supposed to be related to social media. So that's something that should be fixed. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, they use the word more more than once. So that's redundant. If you are using a screen reader and you see the word more hyperlinked multiple times, you don't know where it's going. So that should be fixed. There is a redundant link here, some links, links to PDF documents, which isn't by itself bad. But PDF documents are generally very hard to make accessible. And so that could be a big issue. No script element, that's probably some issue in the back end coding. You'd have to check with like a web developer. A couple other some weird things here. Device dependent event handler, no idea. Ask your, your web coder. Very small text, interesting. Um, there is a minimum size of text that's required, so I'd have to take another look at that. I wonder if you could look at it in the fully styled thing here. Yeah, okay, very small text. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. I'd have to look a little bit closely at the back end. And there's some redundant title text here. More news. Again, they keep using the word more, so that's a problem. Now, there are lots of features here. There's lots of alternative text that's used. Um, there are items that have null or empty alternative text. You can do that when an item is decorative. In this case, it makes sense. These images are decorative because they are paired with headlines that are very clear. Uh, there's a skip link, which is great. 
And then you can see the structural elements down below. As you can see, or unordered lists are used. There's different heading levels used. That's good. That's all good stuff. Uh, again, you can take a look at the structure, get an idea of how each section is laid out and how the headings are laid out in each section. As you can see, it's a simpler website. Simple is very good when it comes to accessibility. It makes sense looking at how this is structured and how the headings are laid out. And they do have um, the headings looks like are used appropriately. So that's all good stuff. We already looked at the, the contrast tab here. So this is a good example of a website that is doing its best to be accessible. Uh, accessibility is never going to be perfect, but we want to do the best we can, especially according to, you know, whatever is legally required. So it's never going to be perfect. It's going to be funny little things like this. Accessibility, like anything else, is going to be somewhat subjective. Like, you know, for example, these um little tiny um, orange arrows here, like technically this report says that these fail, but these are just decorative, so it's not a big deal. So you can't rely on this report alone to say whether a website is perfect or not. You have to use your own judgment. And so if you were trying to evaluate the, the legality of how accessible a website is according to Section 508, there's going to be some little bit of, uh, you know, subjectivity in there, whether something needs to be fully contrasted or not, whether something's decorative or not. So there's always going to be an element of um, needing to be judged by an actual human. So you can never just rely on an accessibility checker, unfortunately. It's a great base, but you have to use your own judgment as well. All right, I hope this helps you out. Again, you can download the um, Wave Chrome extension if you use Google Chrome as your browser. It's really helpful. So you can just analyze things really quick. Um, this does work somewhat for Storyline or Captivate projects as well. If you wanted to examine those, those are more difficult to make accessible, but it'll give you an idea of how they are structured and what that experience would be like for someone using a screen reader or keyboard navigation. Hope this has been a helpful demo and you can get started right away analyzing accessibility yourself.